energy balls, protein bites, bliss balls, however you like to call them, these easy no-bake snacks are perfect for taking on the go. They can be made with simple pantry-friendly ingredients and you can customize them to create your favorite flavors. Hello, I'm Catherine, and this is going to be a really fun video because not only am I going to walk you through how to make energy balls and show you three of our favorite flavors, we have asked you to challenge me to create your dream energy ball flavor. And I have no idea what your answers have been. Brian has been desperately trying to drop hints all week because he gets very excited and has a hard time keeping secrets. Hold on, Brian, for a few more minutes. Hold on for the challenge and let's talk about energy balls. These snack-sized bites are full of protein, healthy fats, carbs, everything you need to feel full and energized throughout your day. And they're typically made with pantry-friendly ingredients. So nuts, seeds, oats, dried fruit. They're sweetened as naturally as possible and flavored in all kinds of fun ways. They can be really easily made with a food processor. Not so easily made with a blender, but it's absolutely possible. And you can make these by hand without the help of a fancy machine, choosing the right ingredients will make that a little easier. You'll need dry ingredients and wet ingredients. Nuts make a great dry ingredient because they add a ton of bulk, but they're also a little pricier and a more common allergen. So some other great dry ingredients are oats, seeds, flaked coconut, and even puffed rice or other grains. For the wet ingredients, nut and seed butters are fantastic. Purees like applesauce and pumpkin, and you can even sneak in a veggie like beets or zucchini. Some great sweeteners to use, dates. We use pitted deglet newer dates, which are a little smaller, a little less sweet than these big and juicy medjool dates. But these medjool dates tend to be higher in price. So we use the pitted deglet newer for our baking and our cooking, and we keep these really luxurious dates for snacking. Another go-to sweetener for us is maple syrup and we're Canadian so this is really accessible for us but if it's not as accessible for you then any other liquid sweetener like a brown rice syrup or agave or you could even use stevia or a bit of a granulated sugar. Finally some great flavor boosters to add in. Unsweetened cacao or cocoa powder, spices like cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, nutmeg, pumpkin pie spice, extracts like vanilla or mint and chocolate chips are always a fun add-in. We have a three of our favorite energy balls here. These recipes are up on our blog, they're linked down below, and I like to think of choosing a star for an energy ball. So with these dark chocolate brownie balls, the star is walnuts. And I tend to use one and a half to two and a half cups of dry ingredients in order to make 15 to 20 small sized balls. So for these ones, I use one cup of walnuts or half walnuts, half almonds, and then one and a half cups of thrifty oats. And that makes two and a half cups of dry ingredients, and then I mix it with half a cup of dates, an eighth a cup peanut butter, and two tablespoons of maple syrup for the wet ingredients and the sweeteners. Then the fun add-ins are cocoa powder, some cinnamon, and some vanilla extract. And you can add in chocolate chips if you like. You can roll them in coconut or in extra cocoa powder for a really dark, rich, chocolatey flavor. And for these, perfect for fall pumpkin pie bites. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. Did anyone challenge me to make pumpkin? Uh, Nora from England. Nora! These are for you, Nora. My friend Nora, by the way, is an incredible scholar and Shakespeare lecturer, and she and her husband have a really fun podcast called Not Another Shakespeare Podcast. If that sounds like it interests you, I'll link it down below. The star of these pumpkin bites is obviously pumpkin puree, but pumpkin puree has a lot of moisture in it, so I use half a cup of pumpkin puree for these and balance that out with half a cup of walnuts, a quarter cup pecans, and a cup of oats. More oats than that, sorry. One more time. And balance it out with half a cup walnuts, a quarter cup pecans, and a cup of oats. So again, that brings me to just under two cups of dry ingredients. And you can use all pecans if you like. They're a little pricier for us than walnuts, but pumpkin and pecans, pecans, it's just, it's yum. Then we use dates and maple syrup for that caramelly sweetness, and pumpkin pie spice brings the fall flavors home. Brian's asking me to take a bite, like I'm going to say no. Gladly. Our brownie balls are dwindling because Brian keeps eating them. 
<laughs> you can make both of these recipes without a food processor. The pumpkin will be a little easier because the puree has so much moisture and it doesn't rely as heavily on nuts. When you make these by hand, they'll just be a little chunkier because you'll be chopping the nuts by hand. But if they're too dry, add a bit more wet ingredients. If they're too wet, add a bit more dry ingredients. That one's not in frame, right? And these beauties are a new creation for us. You loved our peanut butter chickpea cookie dough bars so much that we made it into an even easier energy ball form. And you don't need a food processor for these ones. For these, I mash two cups of chickpeas by hand and add just half a cup of oats. And that's because the chickpeas are quite dry, so they actually function more like the dry ingredient for this recipe. Then I add in a half a cup of runny peanut butter. You could use a seed butter or a school safe option if you need and a quarter cup maple syrup. And then I stir in a quarter cup of chocolate chips for fun. Hopefully these three flavors have given you a better idea of how to go about building your favorite energy ball flavor. And with that said, it is now time to reveal our challenge and I will hopefully show you how easy it is to make these delicious energy balls on the spot with a flavor that you have chosen. So Brian, it is finally time for you to tell me what the people have chosen. Drum roll, please. Oh, I'm so excited. Flavor is? Flavor is? Chili. From Cat in Belgium. Cat in Belgium, chili flavored. Paired with maybe something sweet like chocolate. Ooh, spicy chocolate. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Chili flavored dark chocolate. Thanks, Kat, this is fun. If you caught those, I'm gonna use some beets. I needed something to bulk this up, and instead of using all nuts, we have some roasted beets. So I'm gonna try sneaking some beet into this and see what happens. I do have some nuts. I couldn't quite decide which nut to use. I'm going with almonds, I'm thinking hazelnuts. They're a little pricier, walnuts, but spicy almonds are a thing, so let's try almonds. Then some oats. I'm gonna use dates to sweeten it, really caramelly, warm, rich. Um, if your dates are a little hard, if you keep them in the fridge, just soak them in some hot water for a few minutes. These ones are pretty soft, so I think I'm okay. Um, I have cocoa powder and chocolate chips, dark chocolate chips. That'll make it really nice and rich. And then the chili. I have chili powder, cayenne pepper, and red chili flakes. I don't know what I'm gonna use yet. We'll see what happens. Um, maybe I will roll these in some cocoa powder mixed with chili powder. This is exciting. I'm just gonna start with the beets, but maybe I'll start with the nuts and break those down first. Do I want a chunk here? Do I want it more ground? Let's do the almonds first. So I'm using half a cup of almonds to start and a cup of oats. Okay, let's grind this. Do you wanna take your earbuds out, Brian? That's probably so loud. <laughs> you okay? I'm gonna fully grind the almonds down just because I'm gonna do more pulsing of this. So, still a little chunky. I wonder what roasting the almonds would do. Probably really toasty and deep flavored. I wanted a medium sized beet. This one's pretty medium. But I wonder if I should cut that. Cut it and help it out. Um, I'm gonna say medium to large sized beet. Let's just go all out. I'll add the dates in at the same time. That was half a cup of dates. Ooh, this is exciting. Woo, look at that. Okay. Mm, BT. Oh, brand new maple syrup. Let's take this off. One second. <laughs> oh, I get to use Sheila's trick. My friend Sheila is an amazing nutritionist and bike touring extraordinary person. And she taught me this trick where if you're using a powder, I'm pretty sure this is the order you do it in. Yeah, a powder like cocoa powder. I think I'm gonna do two tablespoons. So you put that in first. That's about two tablespoons. And then if you're using something like maple syrup, oh. It just slides like right out, super easy. Maple syrup's maybe not the absolute best example, but if you do this with peanut butter, 
and you put the liquid in after the cocoa powder, it's like you don't have to scrape out all the last bit of peanut butter. It just, it all comes out right away. She looks pretty smart. I think I'm gonna do two tablespoons of maple syrup. And I just did two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Maple syrup's gonna help bind it a bit. I told Dave, my brother-in-law, that he would make it into a video at some point for his dislike of cocoa powder. If you're like my brother-in-law and you aren't the biggest fan of the bitter taste of cocoa powder, one thing you can do is add some salt in and that will help cut a little bit of the bitterness. Or instead of using cocoa powder, you can melt some chocolate chips. It'll be richer, obviously more added sugars, but then you can get the chocolatey taste without the cocoa powder. So I'm gonna melt this. I'll be right back. Could add coconut oil to this, which helps thin out the chocolate, but I'm gonna try to avoid adding some oil to start and see how that goes. Adding in, yeah, this was a quarter cup of chocolate chips that I started with. How's this looking, cat? I hope you like beets. Otherwise, just use all nuts. <laughs> this isn't the lowest sugar ball, but we're doing a dark chocolate chili ball, so let's add in some extra sweetness from chocolate chips. You can sort of, can you see that ball moving around? This is when you know you're on the right track. So once there's enough moisture in it, the dough will start forming a ball and start moving around your food processor. And that means it'll be sticky enough to form into a dough or into a ball and roll with your hands. Oh, I forgot the chili. We need some chili. It's just Brian and I eating these, so I'm gonna use my hands. Oh, this is so good. Chili powder, chili flakes. Roll it in chili flour, flour, <laughs> chili powder. Use chili flakes. Quarter cup, quarter cup. That would be a lot of chili. <laughs> quarter teaspoon, which isn't, I don't know, they're so spicy, but it doesn't seem like enough. Let me see what happens. I'll just grind this quickly. You can speed this up. Probably should have added that in earlier when it wasn't so clumpy, but this is gonna be okay. You use one of these. These are handy to move it around and scrape the edges. Okay. Oh my God, that's so tasty. Not spicy enough though. Eighth teaspoon. Let's see what happens. Cayenne pepper. Spicy cayenne pepper. I'm also very short, as you can tell. Oh, now it's smelling spicy. Mmm. Oh, it hits you after a second. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's enough if we roll it. That's spicy. That's good. I need a quarter teaspoon of hot chili flakes and an eighth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then I'm gonna roll it in a mixture of cocoa powder and chili powder. Yeah, I think this is too sticky though. It needs to be more of a ball. Let's do. Oh. Rogue chocolate chip. What did I use? I used a cup of oats. Let's do an eighth a cup more and see what happens. I think I can do a quarter cup more, which is nice. So another eighth a cup makes a quarter cup. See, I can do math. Still pretty sticky. Sometimes if you're gonna roll it in something, then having a stickier dough is good because then whatever you're rolling in it sticks. If you're not rolling it in something, then you don't want it quite this sticky. Oh my God, it smells so good. I could just stay here and smell it. So if you wanna add extra protein to these, how this is still a little sticky would be a great time to use a protein powder. If you use protein powders, I don't think I need more chocolate, so I won't add it. So what have I done? One, let's see what one and a half cups of oats does. That might be the trick. Perfect. Let's start rolling. So I have taken the blade out. Do that very carefully. And I have a cookie scoop. You can scoop this just with a tablespoon if you like, but I like using this cookie scoop. They're all uniform. Look at that. So this is a pretty good amount of stickiness. It's not too, too sticky. It's not gonna stick to my hands too much, but it also rolls into a ball super quickly which is what we want for a quick no-bake treat. Roll these up, let's see how many, I think we should be able to get at least 16 out of this. So how's your day going? Good, thanks for joining me. I think I'm sort of rocking this challenge, but let's see if I ruin it with uh, what I roll these in. Getting a little sticky. This is fun, right? You can do this with your kids. It's like a fun 
sticky craft, but you're making food that you can then pop into their lunches. Any of these energy balls, if you wanted, obviously if you wanted to make these bigger, then just double up on the dough. You'll get less, obviously, but then you just make more or eat less, but just make more. <laughs> Our chickpea ones, I make a little bit bigger. I don't know why. They just felt like they needed to be a little bigger. These ones are more delicate. These are gonna be kind of like dark chocolate, spicy truffles. Number 17. These are also fantastic to take on the road. They're kind of like, can I say Timbits? Energy balls remind me of the great Canadian Timbit. Little donut holes, are they donut? They're not really the donut holes. That's a big talk there. <laughs> Brian said it, better than Timbits. And this made 21, which means that this is the taste tester. And we get to eat it right away. Can you open the door for me? Yeah. <laughs> now for the really fun part, we're gonna roll them. And I am going to start with a tablespoon of cocoa powder. And this is mild chili powder. I'm gonna start with a quarter teaspoon and mix this together. It needs more chili powder. Okay, that's half a teaspoon of chili powder and a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Now let's roll one, see what happens. A handy thing, you just swirl it around. Look at that. You don't even get, oh, your hands are sturdy. Okay. Mm. Mm. A little spicy, but I think you need that to know that it's chili. We're probably gonna need, mm, I feel like it should taste like chili. Sometimes this just swirling method is a little quicker than rolling it out in like a dish. Maybe a little messier. <laughs> so these will soak up this cocoa powder and the chili powder a little bit. And if you're serving these to someone, or you can always re-roll them in a little bit of this cocoa powder and chili powder before you go to eat them if they're not coated enough, but it'll still, still retain that flavor. This is pretty exciting. So we usually store our energy balls in the freezer because they last a really long time and they're usually soft enough to eat straight out of the freezer, which is fantastic. You can just take them out whenever you're, if you're still working from home in this pandemic life, then you can just pop one out of the freezer, pop it in your mouth whenever you need a snack. But if you want to take them on the go, then they'll also last in your bag in a little container and you can totally store them in the fridge if you're not gonna, if you're gonna go through them a little quicker. So let's make some cocoa powder with cayenne pepper and see how that goes. Tablespoon of cocoa powder, eighth the teaspoon. Full eighth the teaspoon, should we do it? I think I only put an eighth the teaspoon in the entire batter. Oh, this is gonna be spicy. Okay, moment of truth. Whoa. That's spicy. Do you like the spice, Brian? Excuse me a moment. Wow. Tablespoon of cocoa powder, eighth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Cat, if you wanted some chili flavor. We're bringing the heat. We're bringing the heat, Brian says. By the time you're watching this, this beet, dark chocolate, chili, I don't know what it's gonna be called yet, creation will be live for you to make and enjoy. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for sending in your flavor suggestions and stay tuned because I'll keep creating and get some of those other flavors that you suggested up on the blog as quickly as we can. And I hope that you click those links below, give these a try. I hope you feel more confident in your kitchen, opening up your pantry to create your favorite flavor of energy ball. In terms of cost, these usually come, oh, they're, <laughs> shedding. These usually cost us, it's still shedding. These usually cost us 20 cents or less per energy ball. So click those links below, subscribe for a new video every Sunday at five and stay tuned next Sunday. We are switching gears a little bit and I am making the most beautiful Iranian Fezzanjun, a pomegranate walnut stew. You won't wanna miss it.